We are headed to go pick up Michelle and we are gonna have a fun day antiquing in one of the cutest towns in all of Oregon. It is called Aurora, Oregon, and there is a cluster in the downtown area of a bunch of amazing antique stores. So we are gonna go have a fun girls day and we're taking you guys with us. Our first stop today is Three Daisies Vintage. This is one of my favorite spots in town and the owners, April McKenzie and Kayla, are so sweet and wonderful. They are a mother and two daughters and they've got really great stuff and their pricing is really good for it being an antique store. It's also super fun because they have different styles and I think that makes such a great combination for owning a vintage shop together because you can come in and it doesn't really matter what your style is, there's gonna be something interesting for everyone here. When I first opened this cabinet up, for some reason I thought that drying meant that it was a record player, but it is actually a towel holder, which makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Michelle and I have a lot of things in common with our style, but we also have very different style from each other and that makes it really fun to go shopping together because we're both always teaching the other person something new about the things that we're into. We thought that these would be really cute to hang on stockings at Christmas time or even to decorate your studio space with. And it's really fun to see where our style overlaps. We were both really drawn to this piece right here. It is a true antique and we're pretty sure that it was used to keep flour and grains in. But both of us were thinking that would make such a great storage cabinet in our studio spaces. These little glasses over here are really cute. If there was a whole set of the blue ones, I'd probably get it. I like to have little shots of water sometimes. <laughs> do you ever do that? Yeah, I have these little, they're, they're like um, uh, liqueur glasses. Oh yeah, little yeah. tiny ones. But they're not straight. I like that these are straight. Yeah. Sometimes I just need like that one little sip of water. <laughs> Look at all the chippy paint. Oh, I need these. I need these for some of my Ekebana bases. What? Oh, you oh, you have a white enough. Yeah. I think I do. I think I have one or two. Oh, look at the shape on this one. This one's kind of fun. Ooh, that's really cool. Don't you think? That's really cool. Should I do this one? Yeah, I do. Because it's unique. We don't want the same thing that everyone else can have. This is perfect. Perfect, perfect. Will it fit in? I think so. I have a couple. I actually think I'm going to get two of them. Because I have a couple vases that need them. And I like these because they're heavy metal. Some of the ones are plastic and you have to like glue them on to hold. Otherwise they'll tilt. These are so heavy that they'll actually stay down. Yeah, both mine have a metal in it. I've seen plastic ones, but it's probably on newer pieces. Okay, great, I wanna get these. Look what Michelle found. It's a surprise for our friend Roger. Oh, I love these lights. I have a big green one. Oh, just like this one. I have two of those. You do? In my, in my studio. You do? Do you want the other one I have? Dark. I think we have an extra one. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, I was going to give you mine. Maybe we'll put it in my studio someday. <laughs> well, that's funny. What is it? Weatherhead? It's kind of a cool box. You know, me and the. Yeah. Box. 
That'd be great for keeping little jewelry bits in. Mm -hmm. Right now I just have those ugly plastic ones. I agree. Ooh, look at these stamps. You know what this reminds me of? When I was a kid and I would go upstairs at the mortuary and I'd look at all the stamps and like the headstone things and... Uh, press. Yeah, the press. <laughs> I really loved these two end tables. I think they'd be fun if you put them together because you could actually make it into an oval or you have them as side tables on each side. Michelle spotted this amazing pair of lions over here. These are the old concrete ones. I'm looking for a fountain for little Italy. So I don't need these guys, but I do need a lion fountain. So this entire upstairs space is all furnished from one company, PDX Estate Services, and the owner, Lynn, has an incredible eye for picking and choosing the pieces to put out on the floor that she finds at her estate sales. And I really think that this is a great place to come if you're looking to furnish a large space because she's got small tables, she's got side chairs, she's got textiles, some of the most beautiful rugs I have seen. Oh my goodness, look at these ones right here hanging over the back. It is such a beautiful space, and I feel like you can find anything you're on the hunt for in this one spot. Oh, look at the little tiny one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna poke myself. I know, I'll be careful. I think I need that one too. <gasps> oh, that's really tiny. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect, okay. Michelle and I were both very drawn to this Japanese wood block print. Look how big this is. This is probably one of the biggest wood block prints I've ever come across. A lot of times you will see them and they will be maybe a four by six inch size. So this one was really beautiful and it was artist signed and titled. And I thought it was very calming and peaceful. Really, really beautiful piece. Main Street Mercantile is, I believe, the largest antique store here in town, and they have some true authentic antiques. And something that I always recommend when you go antiquing is take a little bit of time, read the tags, carefully pick up the piece and look for stamps because when you find something that you really love, this is the best way to learn exactly what to look for when you're out thrifting. This place has some of the best original art that I've seen at an antique store. The great thing about having a really large space is there's lots of wall space to fill it up with amazing treasures. You know, I'm always looking for brass vases and I really like the art deco look of this one. They've got $18 on it, which honestly is a really good price for an antique store for such a beautiful old piece. I have such a thing for trinket boxes. This one's got really unique design and it's only $8. I think this one's gonna look great with some of the other ones I already have. This place is three levels and the entire basement is jam packed with different kinds of vendors. I've been finding a lot of really good tooled leather purses lately. This one is $28, which is not a bad price. I typically sell these on my website for around 48.
I am so drawn to gazelles. They are in a lot of different mid-century art. And this top one here is only $22. So I'm going to grab that one for my shop. This is what I mean. You can find every kind of style here. It's so fun to go through these large spaces and pick out the things you love the best that represent your own style. Here's more of this art deco stuff. Remember we saw this in Hillsboro? Yeah. Ooh, that one's got a tea container. Salt. That's my kind of salt container. I love salt I so much. Yeah. Me too. But I'm probably not going to. Obviously, this is going to be my favorite stop of the day. This is mid-century modern heaven, in my opinion. I really think this is one of the best mid-century modern antique stores in the entire Pacific Northwest. The owner has done an incredible job curating a very authentic mid-century modern store. It's filled with pieces that are very desirable, that are very collectible. And I really like that she picks the very classic mid-century pieces for her store. Honestly, I have not seen anybody do it better. She has probably one of the most extensive Haywood Wakefield collections I have seen. And even right over there on that shelf, you can spot a Catherine Holm. I get this question all the time and it is how do I learn more about vintage and I really truly believe that the answer is you need to go in person to vintage and antique stores and learn what things are just like with everything in life there's no quick fix you're not going to learn everything overnight I am still learning every single day and I put in a lot of time and effort to go to these antique stores to look at tags learn about designers and keep expanding my knowledge so get out there and support your local businesses i'm sure you're not going to leave empty-handed that's another fun thing about going out in person to learn is you always end up finding a great deal and a great treasure for yourself it's so hard to find these full sets without any of the pieces missing at thrift stores and that's something that's really great about going to an antique store it's typically people sell things in the full set I am completely in love with this piece. It's so unique because it's got the three elements. It's got wood, it's got the glass, it's got brass. This is such an incredible piece. I feel like that would be so beautiful in my new house. It's out of my budget today though. This shape of chair is so fun. I've got my girl Courtney at once again vintage on the hunt for something similar in green for me. South End Antique Mall is another stop you've got to hit when you come to see Aurora. And the best part is just across the street is Filbert's, the best restaurant in town. Look at this little pouch. <laughs> Do you still have the one I got you? Yeah, I've got four of them. Oh, you have a collection. Do you remember the Clydesdales at the cemetery? The hearse. Aww, I always love their little furry feet. Look, it's a crater lake. Oh, it's only $40. It's kind of cracked though, you see that? Yeah, it's like $40. Yeah. Shoot. I think I'm gonna pass. I'll find another one. Spring and summertime are the best times to sell floral paintings. I'm always looking for these for my online shop and I love the green background on this one. These chairs are surprisingly comfortable. I feel like until you've sat in one, you don't realize how cozy they are. This one is only $42 and I think if you just added in a new pillow, that could be so cute. 
This face is very intriguing to me. Sadly, it did not have a signature on the bottom. So if anybody knows who this is made by, please let me know in the comments. What'd you find? Well, does this look familiar? <laughs> what is it? <gasps> That's your same teapot you just got. Oh no. Yeah. There's but... another one that goes with it. And... <gasps> the whole set. Wow. Well, you only yeah. need one. We're more eclectic people. Yeah, yeah. We don't like matchy matchy. No. Oh, I'm really loving this piece. Really, really loving this piece. I almost made it the entire day without getting a hat. <laughs> We're at the very last store. And I think I need this summer hat. What do you guys think? <laughs> Michelle said it looks cute. I like the weight of it. It's like mm -hmm. kind of heavy, like, but in a good way. I like the little, little brim on it too. How it kind of goes um, up? Lips. Yes. Let's see, what does it say and how much is it? It says Panama, I think. Oh, oh Panama hat. Yeah, Panama hats. And let's see how much it is. $19. I'm gonna get it. Mm -hmm. Woo! Michelle found a gorgeous 1950s dress for herself. I got my straw Panama hat. All in all, it has been a wonderful day. Now we're gonna head to Filbert's, our favorite restaurant in town. What do you know? I got another hat. <laughs> Aurora was so much fun with Michelle the other day. I didn't have time to pull out my items that afternoon when we got home, but I wanted to show you some of the things that I picked up now. So I did end up picking up this adorable brass lidded dish. I have so many little trinket boxes, but I just couldn't pass this one up. It is so cute. This rib style on here actually reminds me of one of my sterling silver rings that is by a Native American artist, Thomas Charlie. And this looks so much like the style of that ring. I just thought it was so cute. And I do have a lot of jewelry. So typically what I do with these is I put out maybe two or three of them together, kind of in a mix matched look look and then I hide my very special treasures in them. So that was one of my only little smalls that I got today and I'm not selling it. Sorry you guys. Michelle and I got this little dish for our friend Roger in Paris because it says Avenue Gabriel Paris. I don't know maybe it's from a hotel it was a souvenir someone took but we thought it was really cute and we're working on saving up some pieces to send to our friend Roger. Thrifting gifts is one of my favorite things to do. So it's always fun when you see something that reminds you of someone and you know they're gonna love it, especially if it's a good deal, pick it up for them. This find is so small, you can barely even see it. Look how adorable this tiny little flower frog is. So you guys know that I'm into Japanese minimalist pottery and Ikebana vases, and I have a lot of them that need these little flower frogs. So I'm gonna be using these in some of the pieces of pottery that I already have. And it's so fun to find these vintage ones that have the metal instead of the plastic. A lot of times when you go to the thrift store, you will find the plastic ones, but I always like to try to find the metal ones. And another thing that's great about the metal ones is they actually have some weight to them. So it helps it stay down. As soon as I'm done showing you the rest of my finds, we're going to head inside and we are going to do some flower arranging. I didn't just go to Aurora to visit the antique stores. I went to purchase a jewelry estate and I got some of the most incredible pieces of jewelry that I've ever come across in my entire life. And I just want to take a second to show you this one here in the car. This one I'm keeping for myself because it is amazing. It's got three large feathers that hang down and then it's got a ram there in the center. And then it's on this beautiful sterling silver collar. And here, let's just pop that baby on. Isn't it fantastic? It doesn't really go with my whole tropical look that I've got going on right now, but that's okay. I got some amazing jeweler pieces and they're all going to be coming to my July 2nd first Friday sale. So mark your calendars and for those of you who are new you can head to my website leftcoastrevivals.com and hit the add to calendar button and then you won't forget and you'll get a reminder 15 minutes before the sale launches and things go very fast so make sure you got your trigger fingers ready to check out. And now I'm going to show you some of the other pieces that I got from that jewelry estate. 
This has to be one of the largest turquoise stones I have ever seen in a cuff. And the detail work here on the side is really incredible. Unfortunately, it is broken. Right here, you can see that crack going through. So I am gonna take it to my local jeweler and see how much it's gonna cost to repair it. The good thing is that's the only spot that has anything wrong with it. And look at the color on this stone. It is seriously unbelievable. It looks multi-dimensional, like it's underwater so beautiful I will let you guys know when I have that one repaired and it will be available this one here is a sterling silver Jerusalem cross and it has a faceted amethyst stone at the center and look at the color on it it's almost a bluish purple color and when the light hits it and goes through it it is just stunning all of this detail work is just unbelievable even this top section here where it hangs from the chain has so much detail on it and check out the back side look at all of this engraving it's got an entire botanical scene with little Little birds such a beautiful piece I think this might be one of my favorites out of the entire jewelry estate it didn't come on a chain so I haven't decided if I'm going to put it on some kind of a chunky chain or if I'm gonna add it to something more sleek and modern like this collar necklace Speaking of this collar necklace, this piece here is a designer piece and it's pretty obvious just looking at the stamp even without doing any research that this was going to be a great piece. But once I looked it up online, I learned that these pieces sell for hundreds of dollars. And I really like the modernist design on this one. It almost looks like a bird. That's kind of what I'm going with. Does that look like a bird to you guys? Am I the only one that sees the bird here? Someone please tell me you see a bird too. <laughs> This is an old Mexican sterling piece and it's got the Aztec card faces, which I just love. And this one's really unique because it has a little bit more of a modernist look to it than a lot of the other pieces that you more commonly see. I'm pretty confident that this is a fairly old piece. This could very easily be from the 40s or 50s. For all of you who are like me and you love to wear belts with chunky turquoise belt buckles, this is probably one of the most beautiful ones I have ever come across. It's got lots of heavy patina on it, so I think it's a fairly old piece, and it has these beautiful bright turquoise, almost sleeping beauty color of nuggets in it. And you can see how many different shades turquoise comes in just by looking at these two. I've been getting really into learning more about the different mines throughout the United States that all of these stones come from, and hopefully someday I'm going to get to be able to actually tour a turquoise mine and take you guys with me. So this guy's fantastic. Not not just because it has a crater on it, but because it is a sand cast ring. And I more commonly see them in brooches and cuffs, so it was really neat to find a ring that was sand cast. You can tell that it was sand cast when you get up close and you look at it, and it has these tiny little divots from the sand that they cast it in. And in my opinion, I think the best thing about sand cast pieces is that they tend to be a little bit more comfortable to wear. So this guy's fantastic, and he's going to be coming to the July 2nd sale. I've got you covered on bears today. This is a fantastic pair of Zuni inlaid earrings and these are so amazing because they have real opal and black onyx and as you turn them, the light reflects. It's so stunning. That is one of my absolute favorite towns to go to. I personally believe that if you live in the Pacific Northwest, coming to wine country just to go thrifting and to go to antique stores alone is worth the visit. So get your girlfriend, get your boyfriend, get your husband, get your dad, anybody who loves to go vintage shopping and take them to Aurora. They will be so impressed with the town. You will have so much fun and make sure you visit Three Daisies Vintage and the amazing mid-century one because if you are into mid-century modern and you're a purist, that is the place to go. I literally feel like I'm going to drool every time I walk in that store. It's also a wonderful place to go if you were into mid-century, not just to look at all the eye candy, but if you want to learn about the different designers and what the value of pieces are, because she has that entire shop packed full and she knows her stuff and it's good. Thanks for hanging out with Michelle and I today. I hope you guys had fun. I would love to hear in the comments below what your favorite thing that we looked at today was. I know we didn't buy a ton, but I'd love to hear what you spotted that you loved. I'll see you guys in a brand new episode soon.
It is flower arranging time. I love putting together bouquets and I put this one together last week for another project that I was working on. And a lot of the flowers are still in really great condition. A couple of them have wilted a little bit here. Some of them haven't even opened up yet, but I thought it'd be really fun to kind of create a completely different look than this whole situation right here by pulling out some specific pieces putting them in the more minimalist Japanese ikebana vases and seeing how we can completely have a different look with some of the very same flowers. The great thing about these being the vintage metal ones is they are so weighted and heavy. So I can just set this right down here in the bottom. And once I put my flowers on there, it will actually hold them in place. A lot of the plastic ones are not strong enough and they don't weigh enough. So you have to glue them to the bottom of your pottery. And one of my favorite things to do is to do things a little bit off center. So being able to move them is really nice because now I can slide it to the side, put my flowers there and have a really unique off-centered look. I didn't pull out a vase to use this tiny little one but I'm so excited that I found it because sometimes it's really hard to get your hands into very small holes in a vase. This one's going to work great to have the half moon crescent one and do that one off center. Once we have the flowers in place then I can add some water and then I will place them on a beautiful shelf and show you how it turns out. I would probably recommend using clippers instead of kitchen scissors, but all of my stuff for gardening is completely packed up right now, so I'm working with what I've got. Just gently give the flower a nice little push to keep it down there once you've got it all the way in the stem. What that does is it helps hold it in place, but it also helps the water get into the plant. You can already see how cool this is gonna look, and one thing that I think is very important is to have really awesome shaped pottery. Now I've got my flower situated the way I want, so it's time to add in some water. Make sure they will be okay. And typically I just go maybe halfway. And now it's time to go set these up. 